The House Ethics Committee has opened an investigation into Florida Congressman Matt Gates, and now Gates has reportedly been snubbed by his political idol, former President Donald Trump. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Without Donald Trump as their standard bearer, and with Joe Biden getting high marks and polls on everything from the economy to his infrastructure bill to his COVID response, we're starting to get a picture of what, if anything, the post-Trump GOP stands for. From the Arkansas State Legislature passing a cruel and horrific law banning gender-affirming medical care to Georgia, Texas, and several other GOP-controlled states, passing draconian new voter suppression laws based on the lie that the 2020 election was somehow stolen from Trump. And by the way, just as a side note to conservative pundits, it's not like a gotcha to point out that you need ID to fly on an airplane or pick up your tickets from a will call booth at a baseball game, since those are not constitutional rights. There's no 28th Amendment guaranteeing the right to pee in a trough at a Mets game next to a guy bragging how he once met Wally Backman at a Denny's in Las Vegas. Refused to take a picture with me. Told me to go to hell, threw a plate of waffles at me. That's the kind of attitude we need on this team right now. Get some run support for DeGrom. <laughs> Turns out that wasn't a COVID issue. These voter suppression laws have been motivated by the lie that there was widespread fraud in the 2020 election, which there was not. One of the biggest purveyors of that lie has been Florida Congressman Matt Gates. You know, the guy who looks like he was drawn by Picasso. I mean, it'd be impossible to even draw a political cartoon about Matt Gates because Matt Gates already looks like a political cartoon. I don't know. I guess I'll make his head look uh, smaller. I mean, look at that thing. Based on that noggin, you'd expect his mouth to move like a South Park character. Oh, hamburgers! <laughs> By the way, he'd be a good substitute if Mr. Med ever calls in sick. Gates repeatedly claimed there was fraud even after admitting he didn't have any proof and that the Trump campaign couldn't produce any proof. I think the Department of Justice has a lot of egg on their face for having not discovered a lot of this fraud as it was occurring. David, as you know, this is very hard to find, prove, and obtain relief on after the fact because so many of the ballots get commingled. So according to Gates, the fact that you can't prove there was fraud proves there was fraud. That's the same argument your college roommate made to prove aliens built the pyramids. If aliens are advanced enough to build pyramids, then they'd also be advanced enough to make sure they don't leave any proof that they built the pyramids. So if there's no proof aliens built the pyramids, then that means aliens built the pyramids. <laughs> or not. <laughs> Gates has been on the vanguard of Trumpism. He's been one of the former president's most loyal defenders and one of the strongest advocates of turning the GOP into a megaphone for Trumpism by embracing, among other things, wild conspiracy theories about everything from the election to COVID to the January 6th insurrection. For example, you might remember that on that day, as soon as members returned to the House floor, Gates cited a debunked rumor that the mob was actually full of Antifa activists. The Washington Times has just reported some pretty compelling evidence from a facial recognition company showing that some of the people who breached the Capitol today were not Trump supporters. They were masquerading as Trump supporters and, in fact, were members of the violent terrorist group Antifa. All right, first of all, you'd think Matt Gates, of all people, would learn not to trust facial recognition software since it would probably recognize his face as a Terry Gilliam animation or a brick with a face drawn on it. Matt Gates shouldn't be in Congress. He should be in the waiting room from Beetlejuice. If you ran Gates through facial recognition software, the computer would probably think it was a Tom Cruise Pez dispenser. He's got a weird head, you guys. Gates was such an avid defender of the former president. Gates even said he'd quit his job to go defend Trump in the Senate. Would you resign in order to defend the president on the way that you want to defend him? I love my district. I love representing them. But I view this cancellation of the Trump presidency and the Trump movement as one of the major risks to my people, both in my district and all throughout this great country. Absolutely. If the president called me and wanted me to go defend him on the floor of the Senate, that would be the top priority in my life. I would leave my house seat. I would leave my home. I would do anything I had to do. Captures the state of the modern GOP so perfectly that Gates thinks the best way to defend his party is to stop being a congressman and just join Trump's legal team of Pillow, Turtleneck, and Giuliani. If I could, I would deliver a way too loud speech filled with misinformation and poor syntax, but alas, me only congressman. And why leave your home? 
I'd leave my job, my home. I'd shed my clothes and roam the forest, subsisting on grubs and berries navigated by starlight until I reached the floor of the Senate, and then I would defend the president with a series of grunts and chest thumps. You mean you really do all that to defend Donald Trump? I mean, how can I get loyalty like that? I once got accused of stealing a muffin from the NBC commissary, and when I asked Wally to vouch for him, he said, I've never seen that man before. You were wearing a mask. It's been over a year. Learn what the top half of my face looks like. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that's how... <laughs> that's, how de <laughs> that's how devoted Gates has been. Not just to Trumpism as an ideological project, but to the man himself. And now that Gates is facing a federal investigation and House ethics probe into, among other things, alleged sex trafficking with his involvement with multiple women who were recruited online for sex and received cash payments, Gates has been snubbed by his political idol. The House Ethics Committee has just announced it's launching a formal investigation into the embattled Florida Republican Congressman Matt Gates. The accusations are stacking up. The Daily Beast now reporting that Gates sent two late night Venmo transactions in May 2018 for $900 to his friend Joel Greenberg, a former Seminole County, Florida tax collector and accused sex offender. Sources tell CNN that embattled Republican Congressman Matt Gates was recently denied a meeting with former President Trump at Mar-a-Lago. Aides reportedly told Mr. Trump not to publicly, quote, stick his neck out to defend Gates, who is being investigated now by the Department of Justice for sex trafficking. Well, in fairness, I'm not sure Trump has a neck to stick out. His head is more like a third shoulder. There's a good chance that during one of his helicopter adjacent press conferences, the propeller lopped his head off and they had to sew it back onto his torso on the taxpayer's dime. Took me to Walter Reed. They got the best neck guy. What a harrowing ride in the helicopter. Same helicopter. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there, the team of doctors. Looking at my body, another one holding my head in the crook of his arm. And I'm watching the whole thing. And I'm thinking goodbye to that body. And I, right before I passed out, I'll never forget the last thing I said. I said, cut the head off Eric's and give me his body. <laughs> Regeneron. They use Regeneron, an amazing, an amazing drug. It comes in a pill or a glue. They just sort of cock it onto your body, put the head back on. Doctor said to me, sir? <laughs> we couldn't believe that the blade went through your skin. Toughest skin they've ever seen. Rich, they said like rich Corinthian leather. Ricardo Montalban. Bad guy, mean guy. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nice to me, though. You guys, of course Trump is refusing to meet with one of his most loyal defenders now that Gates is in legal trouble. Haven't these guys learned anything? Trump will never return the loyalty you show him, ever. That's why he's never had a dog. If Trump played fetch with the golden retriever the first time he brought back the tennis ball, Trump would present the dog with a bill. So Trump's dodging Gates after Gates spent years parroting Trump's most unhinged lies. The next thing you know, Trump's going to start acting like he doesn't even know Matt Gates' name. It was Trump's fault. It's always Trump's fault. Can it ever be like a Rick Gates's fault? I mean, uh, it's always Trump's fault, Rick. Every single guy, even if they hated me, they'd all contribute. But Rick, you understand it. I don't want to make those calls. In fairness, he definitely looks more like a Rick than a Matt. Although I'm guessing Trump just calls everyone Rick if he forgets their name. I mean, he lives in Florida, so it probably works about 60% of the time. And now I'd like to introduce the former first lady, my beautiful wife, my best friend, Lifelong companion, Rick. <laughs> Rick, don't be like that. <laughs> Trump's not the only Republican apparently turning his back on Gates. Conservatives in general, including Gates' buddies on Fox News, which has hosted Gates more than 300 times since the summer of 2017, have suddenly gone quiet. Although part of that may be due to the fact that even though he's on TV all the damn time, nobody seems to like him much. Another day and yet very little response from his fellow Republicans. Right. <laughs> well, it's an open secret that he's not well liked among Republicans. He has no one in Congress for the not no one, but almost no one who really wants to stand with him right now. He has very few defenders. Gates' own aides would regularly send embarrassing videos of their boss to other GOP operatives, meaning they didn't even like the guy. Gates was never particularly popular among his House Republican colleagues. They're probably just jealous that Matt Gates is the only elected man in the Republican Party because 
about his clothes. I'm not saying I like his style, but at least he has one. The rest of them look like they buy their suits at Brown Hefty Bag Warehouse. We're gonna hate the way you look, so why bother? Does this mean even Jim Jordan won't come to Gates' aid, the donkey to his Shrek? I have to say, it's so funny that Republicans are suddenly telling reporters how much they hate Matt Gates. They sound like a bunch of mean high schoolers. You can just picture Ted Cruz and Kevin McCarthy gossiping at their lockers in the congressional hallway. Matt invited me to his house to do whippets in his basement, and I said no. Well, I told Matt I couldn't go over to his house after school to check out his pet lizard because I had to comb the lice out of my beard. Now let's go shake Lindsey Graham upside down. Fellas, I don't have any lunch money. Meemaw packs me a pudding and some Lunchables every day and tells me I don't deserve it because I interrupt her while she's flirting with the mailman. He's got other houses to get to, Mima. <laughs> One of the last friends Gates seemed to have left was this guy, Joel Greenberg, who's been indicted and faces 33 federal charges as part of the investigation that ensnared Gates. Greenberg is the former Seminole County tax collector, which is like a job out of small town corruption Mad Libs. If you're the Seminole County tax collector, and you get business cards printed up, they automatically add under federal investigation. Of course this dude was corrupt. Look at him, a lawyer in a labor dispute involving a former employee told the New York Times it's like the Tiger King got elected tax collector. A statement meant to be hyperbolic, but when said in the context of the state of Florida, seemed like a thing that might have already happened. I made an intern rewatch that Tiger Man thing, and no, he was never tax collector, but he did run for governor, and he did do pretty well. And by the way, even if he was the actual Tiger King, it would still probably lead them back to Matt Gates. Yes, I Venmoed Carol Baskin with the subject line, husband and a shovel emoji. So what? That could mean anything. And if you give me three days, I promise to come up with at least one other possible explanation. Greenberg's been accused of an impressively long and diverse litany of crimes and other inappropriate conduct. According to the Times, he strutted into work with a pistol on his hip in a state that does not allow guns to be openly carried. He spent hundreds of thousands of taxpayer dollars to create no-show jobs for a relative and some of his groomsmen. Stalking a rival candidate got him arrested. Federal agents looked into the matter, found at least five fake IDs in his wallet and backpack. Okay, first of all, I got my groomsmen tie clips that were engraved with the words, thank you. So if you feel the need to get your groomsmen no-show jobs, I mean, you're hushing them up after someone drowned on a fishing trip, right? Also, he had fake IDs in his backpack. Is he a county tax collector or the coolest kid in the eighth grade? Where'd they arrest him outside a liquor store buying beer for teenagers? But apparently, Greenberg wasn't Gates' only wingman. He was also close with yet another impossibly Floridian character who's now been implicated in the investigation as well. CBS News has learned that investigators are scrutinizing a trip Congressman Matt Gates took to the Bahamas with this man, Jason Pierrizzolo, a marijuana entrepreneur, Orlando hand surgeon, and donor to Gates. My name is Dr. Jason Pierrizzolo with Orlando Hand Surgery Associates. Multiple sources familiar with the federal probe tell CBS News Pierrizzolo and Gates traveled to the Bahamas in late 2018 or early 2019, and Pierrizzolo paid for travel expenses, accommodations, and female escorts. One key question for investigators, were the women illegally trafficked across state or international lines for the purposes of sex with the congressman? That's right. Gates went to the Bahamas with an Orlando hand surgeon who's also a marijuana entrepreneur. The only way that could be a more perfectly Floridian occupation is if he added owner and operator of fan boat traveling funeral parlor for kids. Also, I'm just curious, when you're in medical school choosing a specialty, how do you land on hands? Was he high when they asked him? So, doctor, what do you want to focus on? I always like looking at my hands or necks. <laughs> Matt Gates was supposed to be one of the leaders of the next generation of Trumpism in the GOP. Now he's isolated and battled and under federal investigation like so many other members of Trump's inner circle, including, of course, Trump himself. It's emblematic of the state of the modern GOP. Gates has denied all the allegations, but who knows, if the feds continue to close in on him, maybe he'll finally make good on his promise. I would leave my house seat, I would leave my home. This has been A Closer Look. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button, stay safe, wear a mask, get vaccinated, we love you.